Uh, hello. Mm. I might have a bit of brain lag today, but I'm gonna do my best. Cause I'm at a point where I really just want to finish these videos up. Um, I'm gonna go do the wonderful area, and then I'm gonna do the the tower area. I think those are both pretty short areas. Um, so I can do two in one video, and I'm gonna do it without music now, cause I've realized that. You know, most, if not all of the music in this game is um, copyright protected. And I'd rather not have these videos uh, struck down. But you know, it's a little too late for that, so we'll, we'll see. But yeah, I definitely don't want to play this LCD sound system song down here. Um, <clears throat> or the fucking George Harrison song coming up later. Um... Yeah, th this uh, little transition area here is pretty much the same as the transition area leading up to the capitalism stage. It's um, uh, just like a transition that I added to make the, the area following it uh, feel more remote. You feel like, uh, yeah, it's just something that you have to work a little harder to get to. The, the design in this, uh, this stage, if you want to call it that, is like strongly Magnificent Stumble inspired, I would say. Um, and it's a, it's a style of design that I'm still very fond of. Like sort of using um, spikes like very diverse ways. Uh, and then of course this jump down here, is the, the plasma jump, he puts this in all of his games and uh, he forced me to put this somewhere in exchange for him finishing the credits or something, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but <laughs> seems like a, a fair exchange to me. Uh, so here we are, the, uh, the wonderful area, you know, a pretty... Uh, controversial one I think it's very fair to say a lot of people's least favorite area um, which I think is understandable given the difficulty of some of the later screens here and the, the difficulty in conjunction with this this style of design that it has <clears throat> just to get it out of the way quickly uh, personally I do really like this area like I tested this area and we made a lot of changes and they, they were, you know, they were all nerfs, I think. Um, <clears throat> and I just had a really good time with it. So like, uh, if someone doesn't like this stage, you know, I think it reflects more on me than on Wonderful. Because ultimately it's my game and I gave it the, the go ahead, you know. Um, but yeah. Well, I guess I could start in a different end. So, like, how, how did this stage come about? Why is there a stage by Wonderful in my game? And I think that started in, uh, in just a random chat room somewhere, and we were just discussing upcoming games, and her and I were both working on our respective game. So she was working on Kermit Three at the time, and I was working on this game, and. Um, just it's like a fun thing we decided to each make a stage for the other person's game. Um, I made like the, the Windows stage in Kermit 3, uh, which you know, coincidentally, I guess, uh, it's maybe also the most controversial stage in that game. Although I, I think less so now, I, I don't think people love that stage, but I think people have an easier time tolerating it because the style of gimmick and design that I used there is sort of like a preview of this game. And now that that style is so commonplace, like people um, don't struggle as much, and so it's not as offensive to them. Um, but yeah, each uh, made a stage for the other's game. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm sort of glad that. Uh, people don't like this stage, 
like, at least they don't like my contribution either. Uh, <laughs> that way, you know, none of us has to feel bad for like um, sabotaging the other's game. Like again, obviously, I don't feel that way, but um, it kind of it kind of sucks. Like if if there's any stage in this game that I would like people to enjoy, it's the one that I didn't make. Because uh, I, I really don't want anyone to feel bad for like something they they put in my game, you know. <laughs> that that kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, it's what it is. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I'm just going to talk a lot about why people don't like this stage. Um, the ones who do, don't. Um, and I think, you know, from what I've gathered, what people told me, um, it's because of the length of the saves combined with the the puzzle elements. And like the fact that the puzzles are not that difficult, it ends up meaning that you like solve the puzzle like within the first two minutes and then it just feels like a long grind, like a chore um, to execute it all. And of course, like because the you're pushing blocks, the, the gameplay is kind of slow. Just, you know, slow gameplay with long saves that have tricky jumps throughout. And like the, the tricky jumps don't really get easier near the end of the saves. Um, so, th so that appears to be sort of the, the problem with the stage. Um, what I like about it is that it's very distinct from all the stages that I made and it has a very clear identity to it that makes it stick out. Um, that's not just because it wasn't me who, who made it, um, but also because I didn't really use very long saves in any of the other stages. Like the, the longest saves you'll see, the only ones that I think <clears throat> compete uh, with the length of these saves are like in the 90s, you know, from 92, 93, or 100. Uh, but other than that, I feel like these are probably the longest saves in the game. Um, what I also like is that it's so distinctly wonderful. And then not just like for this stage, but like her style in general. Um, like think about like how sort of simple these jumps are. Like I really don't mean that as an insult, but like there's so many gates and diagonals and like moving spikes that, you know, follow like very basic paths, like up, down or left, right, you know. Um, and yet like all of her games just don't feel like any other games. Like you can immediately tell when something's a wonderful game. And I don't think anyone has really been able to, or maybe even wanted to uh, replicate that style of design. Uh, and I really think that's, that's commendable. And it, it also highlights this, you know, the, this tenet of this game, of my game, um, that I've been trying to talk communicate throughout these videos where I want to do a lot with a little like it's not about putting out all these extraordinary like crazy gimmicks that don't look like any other fan games but it's like you do small things you know like in the golden area where you have the warps between the, the jumps um, you do s these really small things uh, that varies the way you present the needle and it just makes it feel new and interesting and makes all the areas distinct from one another. Um, so yeah, doing a lot with a little and I feel like Wonderful is a master of that. <clears throat> so that so that I like. Um, also like this gimmick right here, the, the switching block. Um, I know she wanted to do more with it, but she couldn't um, get it to work the way she wanted because she wanted it to flip both uh, types of blocks, so both the blue ones and the pink ones. Um, <clears throat> but like apparently, like not even with uh, Patrick's help, um, could 
could she get it to work? So, so it only works for the pink, the pink ones. Um, that's a shame because it's a very, it's a, a high potential gimmick, I think. Like more complicated puzzle design. Um, but yeah, obviously, no, I, I didn't make this stage. I can't give any like further insight. Um, so I'm just gonna carry on. Collected that already. Mm. Uh, it's possible that I could take a warp here. Do I have infinite warp on? I do, okay. It's weird. One attempt, two attempts. And I'm not that good at the moment. Um, yeah. So this was a pretty early stage in the game. Uh, I think this was maybe the fifth stage that I at least started making. Um, this particular screen might be the only JTool needle screen in the game. I, I'm not gonna think about that. It, it, it might be. I, I barely use JTool at all. Like most of the game was designed um, directly in Game Maker. I do think like better design um, comes out of making in Game Maker. You know, I could give theories to why that is. Um, I think you're more careful with the with the design, but whatever. I I, I don't really care that much. It, it it just works better for me at this point. Um, CN one and CN two were like fucking almost all of it was made in RMJ. Um, you know, switch up the approach a little bit here. Um, I'm not that fond of this stage. This is probably like my second least favorite stage. The main thing I don't like about this stage, and that's like, all right, so, so there are a few things I don't like. So one thing I don't like is this room. I, I think it's pretty bland. Um, another thing I don't like is that it sort of lacks a uh, clear identity. Um, and you know, I just talked about that on in the wonderful stage. Like, I like how all the stages feel distinct. And I think this stage is distinct from the other stages, um, but it doesn't have like a clear identity in the sense of that if, if you were to think about this game, and if, if you beat the game and you think back on like the stages you've done, I feel like this stage would like be the last to come to mind. Um, so I guess it's like the blandest stage. And I also don't like that it's so short. And I think if I would have made it longer, just like have a, a tall tower climb and like the, the sort of have the, the moving platform as the, the foundation for this style of design, um, this stage could have been really good and really memorable. But instead, um, it's just kind of, it just kind of ends very abruptly. Um, but these first two screens I made early on, and then I added the, the last two later. And I think the last screen in this stage is like by far, far the best screen in this, <laughs> in this stage. Um, has the most interesting ideas, the, the platforming feels the most polished. Um, it has the most fun jumps, like the most satisfying maneuvers. Um, and yeah, uh, it was made later on, so I, I feel like I was a better designer at that point. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's sort of a, might have been sort of a time constraint problem that um, caused me not to develop the stage. And I think like one, one thing here, okay, you can't go back, um, that this, this stage uh, exemplifies, so it's, it's like a very clear case of 
you're making something early in development that ends up feeling outdated by the end of it. Um, and that's sort of an interesting thing. And I think for me, like generally speaking, um, the right approach is not to remove um, stuff that you're not happy with anymore. Um, it's like f f one reason not to remove it is that it, that just goes on perpetually and you'll always have like some thing that uh, feels outdated and you like you feel like you keep improving um, your design and then like something else will like fall behind um, which you know that's that's sort of what's happened with um, balloons like, so recent that game it's been in development for 10 years and like they, they'll never really <laughs> there's always there will always be some part that just doesn't feel up to <laughs> their new standards. Um, but yeah, that's one reason to leave stuff like that. Um, and another reason is that I think it, at least optimistically, like it can add some variety to the game. Like it, it just creates a mix of styles sort of. And I do like very sincerely think that if, if every screen in this room was designed um, sort of like the, the last screen in this stage, uh, the red screen, um, the, the game just would have been worse off. Like, even if I think that style of design is preferable, um, it's not preferable to have it throughout the whole game. That would make it bland. Um, so, you know, it, it, it could be a good thing to uh, keep stuff like that. But yeah, now I want to talk about um, I think the New Gizim. Uh, I think it's one of the best games that I made. Um, probably the best non uh, Crimson Needle game that I made. And it's so this game was made as a continuation on um, Haystack 2. So I made that game. Um, and I felt like I, I sort of unlocked this new um, approach to game making, which I've been talking a lot about, like primarily like a new approach to problem solving. And I came up with like a lot of new gimmicks that I felt had more potential. Um, <clears throat> but I, but it was also clear to me like that that game was not very well received, and not a lot of people played it. Um, so that was sort of the, the, the basis for this game, was to make a game um, with those ideas and that same style of uh, game making or that same approach to game making, um, but to make the game more accessible. Um, so that was the, the ground idea. And it's sort of like, you know, I made Haystack 2 and I really felt like, oh, I have something special on my hands here. And then people just didn't seem to get it or to see it, you know, it was kind of frustrating. Uh, so then this game is like me, you know, like raising my voice and really saying like, hey, please like look at this, you know, the, this is sort of, <clears throat> this is another way we could also design needle, right? We, we, we could really diversify <clears throat> the needle output in this community. Um, and then this game released and it, it got more attention than the Haystack 2, but I didn't really see a change in the way that people were making Needle post this game. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, if, so if this game was me raising my voice, then CN3 was me like screaming at the top of my lungs, like, look at, <laughs> you know, how much more we could be doing than, than what we currently are. <clears throat> I really need a glass of water, but whatever, maybe it will clear up. Um, and you know, it, it worked, you know, simply <laughs> people uh, got the message, I think. Um, but yeah, I, um, so, so in addition to just um, sort of the, I guess the, the gimmick aspect of this game, it's me reusing a lot of 
Uh, the Hisek 2 gimmicks, but in the, like in, in an easier design, more approachable. Um, the the another idea that was like at the core of this game um, was that each green would feel like so just a brief challenge, and the game that I most like to compare it to as sort of a a guide for this um, would be the Warrior Wear or like that that series. Like I like the idea of like you're just thrown in into a room. Um, of course, like you, you're not on a timer. Uh, you are in in here, but not in the original. Thank the new user. Um, but like you just, you know, face with this new challenge, and then hopefully, like you'll figure it out pretty soon, and then you'll just move on, and it's like something completely different in the next room. It's just like one idea, um, quickly executed in like a a way that is. Um, satisfying to maneuver through um, and then that idea is just discarded and you move on to something completely different um, and I like okay, so, so think about it this way right we have like thousands and thousands of needle games and like how many of those thousands upon thousands of needle games break the mold of like just having screen after screen after screen on needle right and like sometimes it's stages and like every few screens it the tile set changes or like every few screens there's a water stage instead of a platform stage uh, like for the most part you're not ever surprised in any of these games and they they just feel on a structural level they feel very samey um, and like this is to like just do a game that's different st structurally uh, like I can't think of like th there, there, there probably are some but I can't really think of any needle game prior to this one that had this structure this this what I'll call the warrior wear structure uh, and I and I think that's that's what I like the most about this game, that it it took a needle and it just presented it in a new way. And like I didn't even need to have any like of these sideways platforms or like fucking, you know, what's next? Like these fucking lines, uh, or like any of these new gimmicks. Like I could have made a game like this, um, with just spikes and blocks, but just have each still have each screen have a new idea. Like the first screen would be like the idea is that you know it looks like geezer, <laughs> and then the next idea maybe the, the idea would be that it's like a fucking long climb, and then the next idea maybe you're uh, you're on a timer. I I don't know. Like I'm not gonna come up with the ideas now, but you know there are so many ways you can just mix up the the basic needle formula. <clears throat> so yeah, and like this game. I think I, I made this in like less than a week because um, like once you sort of open this box of ideas like there's just so much you can do like even an idea like this this is so simple like I just drew the paths you have to walk there's nothing to it anyone could have made this it takes no coding knowledge or anything you just you just think of new ideas and then uh, you put them in like this, the screen is nothing, you know. The only idea I had for this was, oh, I, I want a fake save. That's like actually a moving platform, you know. And then that's a new screen. All right, this screen. This is like not like any other screen in the uh, in Think the New Geezer. Um and it's just about you know learning the cycles, uh, finding a strat. There are probably like a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, and I think like at most this is probably gonna take you about five minutes to figure out and then you move on to the next thing. All right, and here I'm using uh, uh, sideways platforms for the first time outside of Haystack 2. So that's like its own screen and then there's like some trigger stuff, uh, you know. It's just like a fun little challenge. Like this screen is super easy. Uh, like I feel like almost anyone could beat this screen, like even if you don't have fan game experience. Um, 
but it's still fun and it's still like unique and it's unexpected um and then you move on to the next one okay now you're chased by a giant spike right uh like there's still like these ideas are, i really want to hammer this down like these ideas are so simple uh, Right, the bounce block, a gimmick that I certainly did not invent. I just ripped it. It was called Block Hanaru or something. It was in the uh, in the U2 engine. Um, but you know, no one, uh, uh, no one was really using it for needle games. It was used in uh, trap games or adventure games sometimes. Like a lot of potential. Um, yeah, again, like it, it's, it's not. <laughs> it it's it's hard to come up with this if you've never like tried to come up with new ideas. Um, you know, to be fair, like I'm not I'm not trying to shit on people for not thinking outside of the box or whatever. And like I also made like fucking fifty games that were just straight needle before I started experimenting with more stuff. Um, like once you know or like once you've unlocked this way of approaching game design i don't think something like this is hard at all to come up with uh, right from here it's like you know like another new idea oops didn't see that spike uh, whatever i can't play more now <clears throat> where you're going like up and down and you know, it's sort of like traps, like you don't really know what's gonna happen in each new column. Um, can I? Whatever, I'll catch up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's just, you know, it's basic ideas. This, this idea is, I'd say, probably the most complicated. Um, but I think it's one of the best puzzle rooms that I made. Right, you know, I I can put whatever I want in my game, right? There's no limitation. Like even a fucking silly screen like this has sort of a a lesson to teach. Uh, like this this is dumb as hell, but you know, nothing's stopping me from putting it in the game. And in a game like like thank the new user, it doesn't even feel out of place. Because every, every screen is a surprise. Every screen has some new unexpected element to it. And this is like a very neatly screen. Uh, but then for whatever reason I decided that this is not going to be like the end warp. Um, and I also... Is this wrong? I thought, where does this take you? Oh, I see. Okay. So that takes you here and then that. Okay. I thought it was the other way around. Whatever. Completely irrelevant. Um, and yeah, this screen. I mentioned this before, um, but this is, I think, one of the best screens that I've ever made. Um, just like, again, it's so such a basic concept, but it just doesn't play like anything else. But yeah, I've already talked about it, so I'm gonna move on. Um, you know, controversial screen, but I thought this, uh, <laughs> I thought this screen was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's like all I did here was to, you know, make some objects invisible, right? Just put in creation code, visible equals zero. And there you go. Anyone can do that. And then you have like a really uh, unique idea. And then I sort of played around with, uh, the, the concept, I like try to utilize that in various ways. Um, I don't remember where to go. <clears throat> it has some like twists and turns and like some puzzly elements to it. Uh, and in the end, you realize that you have to go here. I think that screen is really cool, but it, it might have, I might have gone too hard on some ideas here, like the platform jump. Uh, like even if you know the jump, it's kind of, Difficult to doing a, an invisible platform, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I you know, 
I tried to make these screens pretty accessible. Um, I might have gone overboard with some of the last ones. Uh, that's a mistake. But yeah, there you go. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm having a hard time uh, sort of hiding my enthusiasm about this game. I think. Um, very, very proud of it. Uh, thank the new geezer. Uh, the only regret I have is that I didn't, well, besides maybe making some screens easier, I think that would have been good. Um, but other than that, I think my, my biggest regret is not making it longer. Like, initially I just, like, my mind was just flooded with new ideas for rooms. And then it sort of started subsiding a little bit. Um, and then I just, like, decided to release the game, because... The ideas weren't coming as fast as before. Like if it, if I would have just held out, um, like there 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 are always there's so many more ideas, just an infinite amount of things that you can do. Uh, okay. Right. Page up here. Um, I don't think I'll have a lot to say here. This is like. This could have been a thank the new DC room, just infinite jump going up. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really have a <laughs> much ideas here. I just put something here to make the stage longer. But then this screen is, like I said, I think I did a much better job with. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it for this this video. Um, hopefully, some of that was interesting or insightful or whatever. And with that, I am uh, done with the uh, thirty one. So that's pretty crazy. It took me like almost two years, I think, to finish recording these videos. But it was certainly not because of the effort of uh, the recording process, I guess. Because I'm just turning OBS on and I'm just going, right? I might have, I have like a few ideas of what I want to talk about, but I'm not really prepared beyond that. But yeah, thank you for watching.